Welcome back. We're the Microphone Joes. I'm CJC. And I'm No Rev. We took a week off due to scheduling conflicts, but we are back and better than ever. And this week, we are going to skip our normal news segment, jump right into the wacky news, and then into our main topic, which is Jessica Jones. Super awesome, by the way. Because we have a lot to go over. So, No Rev, why don't you take it away with this week in our wacky world. All right, for our first one, we actually, or actually our only one, matter of fact, <laughs> I shouldn't say the first one, um, we actually have people, America's tallest mountain has a serious human poop problem. The tallest mountain in the Na- United States, which is Alaska's Denali National Park Preserve, uh, doesn't give an actual name of the mountain. According to this, and I quote from Live Science, all right? According to a new set of waste management regulations proposed this year, climbers who want to reach the summit of Alaska's Denali National Park and Preserve may dispose of their poop in just one location on the mountain, and one location about 100 miles away. Away from the mountain. Away from the mountain. Okay. The Associated Press reported the proposed rule changes were motivated by more than a decade of research conducted by National Serv- or National Park Service researchers who found that glacial melt on the mountain is getting close to contaminating nearby water sources with distressing amounts of human fecal bacteria, end quote. So, I have a couple things on this. First off, the people that are climbing a mountain have to take a dump, so they just do it wherever. That's that's, that's the problem, yeah. Okay. Second, <clears throat> the place they're supposed to dump their fecal matter is 100 miles away. So they're supposed to walk 100 miles to dump the shit, and then walk back. They're going to have to take a shit by the time they get back. That's, yeah. Yeah. Basically. So, the last thing is, this is a study that took ten years. Ten years. Ten years by who? Uh, the National Park Service. The National Park Service. So, as far as I am aware, the National Park Service is part of the United States government? Yes. Yeah. So, you're telling me that the U.S. government for ten years funded a research effort into human poop on a mountain. Tax dollars at work. My, my God. <laughs> my God. <laughs> that's a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. So, yeah, that's... Uh, and that pretty much sums up that. Way. I don't really know where to go from there. That's, that's kind of depressing on many levels, and not even the level that there's a bunch of poop on a mountain. <laughs> I wonder if the height of the mountain has increased over this time. It, you know, it might have. It might have. But I'll tell you what, you can definitely grow a lot more stuff on there. Yeah, why aren't we putting that that fertile fertilizer to use? <laughs> uh, anyways. All right, so... We should probably get to our main topic. Yeah, so Jessica Jones came out last week. Um, we took the weekend to shotgun the entire series. And we mean shotgun. And we shotgunned it and a few beers. The last season dealt with Jessica Jones dealing with the Purple Man. Um, I don't David know, Tennant. Kilgrave. And so this one is more about her personal life. It's an overarching story about her personal life. And more about her past yeah, and more about her where past. she came from and how she got her powers. It's, and as a rough overview, it's definitely not as action-packed as the first one. No. The first... Probably six episodes are a, as slow a burn as a slow burn can get. Yeah, but the last one, the last few episodes yeah, are... Yeah, the like, last five are intense. Yeah, they're in, like intensely psychological. Yeah, so it's it's kind of, to me, the whole series felt like... We'll give a generalization before we go into spoilers, because we're terrible at spoiling everything. It felt like kind of an old noir type of... Yeah. It, it was a lot of... like. Crime mystery, mystery yeah. crime. There's and... almost no big fight scenes in this. Thing. No, not really. No, there's not. A I lot mean, of... there's definitely super stuff going on, but there's no big brawls in a bar like in the first season no. with her and uh, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. There's just none of that. So it's it's a very and it's a lot of there's a lot of focus on the side characters too, like Trish and yeah. um, Malcolm. Is that his name? I, yes, that Malcolm. the. And Hogarth gets a lot of time. Yeah, By the way, she Hogarth, does. 
the actress that plays Hogarth is really good. Yeah, she, she does is. a great job. I don't know if she's been in anything else besides Not this, that I but... can think of, but she does a really good job. There's always the random cameo by a character in another series. Foggy shows up yep. for all of 30 seconds. Yeah, and, he, and that's like, it. Exactly 30 seconds, it seems. He's there, and then he just never shows up again. Yeah. And, uh... There's the usual, like, hints and nods and winks. There was a lot more, though. Yeah. There was... The one kid had a... Captain America. Captain America action figure. They brought up... A couple times other heroes and stuff. And it also mm-hmm. kind of dealt with this, which makes sense, there's this bigotry towards powered people. Yeah. Which is interesting. Because, because you always see one side of it, but it's nice to actually see, like, all right, these people are understandably pissed off, because look at all this destruction. Yeah, I mean, it, in these superhero movies, a lot of the time, it's just like they ex- like the DCU. Mm-hmm. They just kind of accept that Superman is... Super- instead of... I mean, there was a few people that they had a few protests or whatever, but there would be people that would not be happy with somebody that can crush a building with their hands, you know? There just wouldn't be, and it it did, it it focused on that a lot. Mm -hmm. So... Or destroy a city with, by fighting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was a good, it was a good series. So, uh, first episode, go ahead, No Rev, give us the title and a little synopsis here, straight from Netflix. A.K.A. Ladies' Night, Episode 1. Jessica Jones is hired to find a pretty NYU student who vanished, but it turns out to be more than a simple missing persons case. I think that's Season 1. You're, lo- you're reading Season 1. Oh, I am, too. <laughs> so just ignore that. I'm, yeah. sitting, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't remember that from, the, from that episode. Okay. So go ahead. Start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called A.K.A. Series. A.K.A. Start at the beginning. While Jessica deals with the rival P.I., and a paranoid would-be client, Trish digs up a medical file that could unlock the mystery of Jessica's powers. So yeah, the other thing, the first half of this season, like I said, Trish is heavily involved. So she's... In- oh, spoilers, by the way. Yeah, oh, totally, we're going to spoil everything. So Trish is using her show as a platform to investigate IGH. IGH. Which is the com- the people, they're not even really a company, they're totally illegal. Yeah. That created Jessica. And among other people yes. that we find out. Yeah. And so she uses Patsy, her alter ego, to get a file from a security guard at a hospital. Yeah, and it honestly is the greatest, like, crash and burn low moment for her, even though that's not her low moment, but... Oh, not, no, she has many low moments in this series. Yeah, but just the fact that she basically had to sell herself as Patsy in order to get this, because she has to sing at a kid's birthday party... Or the the security guard's kid's birthday party. Yep. And it, you can just tell the dread on her face. It's like sheer yeah. humiliation and shit. And so this is nothing to do with the rest of the episode, but something I appreciated. The security guard who's having the birthday party, he's gay. Mm-hmm. But it's not obvious. Yeah. They're like... I hate... And I hate... It's like a normal family, yeah, normal. and then it's, it's all like, oh, hey, here, this by is the my way. Husband. Yeah. You know, I appreciated that they. That they're not rubbing they our noses in it? Well, they didn't stereotype them to hell, you know? Yeah. They were just normal people, because that's. I mean, if you want to make it normal, homosexuality and those relationships, they have to come across as normal. You can't just shove. Because a lot of shows, they give you, you can't that super have it stereotypical. Looking like like uh, Mr. Garrison and Slade. Yeah, so I just. I appreciated that they were a. It was, they were normal, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know that's off topic from the rest of it, but, uh, so... Also, too, I really dug the paranoid dude that had superpowers. That was interesting. We don't find that out until the next episode, but she, um... So Jessica gets approached by the Chinese guy, I don't remember his name, Yeah. who we, I theorized at the... The at other our, PI is the Chinese guy. Yeah, I theorized a couple episodes back when we first broke down the trailer a little bit that he was going to be the other superpowered person. Spoilers, yeah. he's not. Um... And then he basically tries to, to strong arm her out. Yeah. And Malcolm is working full time for her. He's training to be a PI. Mm-hmm. And the entire season he's repairing her apartment because it is just destroyed. Yeah. And it gets destroyed more. Yeah. And it's funny too. She keeps firing him, but he comes back he, this he tomorrow. He's firing her. Yep. <laughs> She'll say to him, you're fired. And he's like, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then she starts trying to find a new case. And all these people come through. We get like this montage. And this one chubby little guy who kind of looks like I don't know his name was the actor from Saturday Night Live the chubby little actor you know what I'm talking about I'm gonna look him up real quick but he kind of reminds me of like a mix between Seth Rogen and um Jonah Hill (laughs) and he says that 
he is super powered. Yeah. He can run fast, but only when he's afraid. Like so, adrenaline spikes. Yeah, so that she obviously doesn't believe him. Oh, so he looks like Bobby Mohan? Monahan. Monahan. He looks just like him to me. Yeah. And he dresses silly and so yep, so that's pretty much that episode. Not really a whole lot happens. Like I yeah, said, these no. first few are a real slow burn. So yeah. go ahead. What is the second episode? AKA Freak Accident. Jessica sets out to find Dr. Kozlov and makes a startling discovery. Trish recruits Malcolm for backup as she re- visits a figure from her past. I'm trying to remember this one. So I know she goes to Kozlov's funeral. Mm-hmm. He was killed in a car accident. And Trish, I don't know if this is the one where Trish runs back into the cop from the first season. I don't remember what his name is. Not cop. No, not yet. Not yet. She runs into him a little bit later. I think it's the third. No, I think it might be this one. It's pretty soon in. And this is also when we figure out that that dude is super powered. Because he runs into her Jessica's office. Yes, you're right. And then he's murdered on the street. Yeah, because this is where she gets that inhaler. Yeah. So we also meet, I'm pretty sure it's either the beginning of this episode or the tail end, her new superintendent of the apartment building, who's yeah. a Latino guy. And we find out later that he is prejudiced towards her because she's super powered. Right. So, oh yeah, because uh, she moves ends up getting fridge. like a... Yeah, she moves a fridge. That's how they first meet, but... He ends up giving her some kind of, like, notice. He tries to evict her. Yeah. Because by law, she's not allowed to have... A, a business, business inside of a residential... Inside of a residential home, uh, area. And so... So Trish is investigating IGH. She won't let it go. I think we're also introduced to her bo- her boyfriend in this episode, who's, like, a reporter for their version of CNN in this universe. Yeah, it's, like, basically their... Her radio station's owner, their parent company or yeah. their sister company He's or like something like that. like a war reporter or something. Yeah. yeah. So she goes to, she goes somewhere, I can't remember where she goes to try and investigate and she runs into knockoff Captain America. Right. And she thinks he's the one that's, she shoots Captain him. America light. Captain America light. She shoots him because Trish is, becomes very unhinged every single episode. Yeah. This. And she finds out that he's been protecting her because she's being followed and he gets killed. Mm-hmm. He gets his neck snapped right around it's oh yeah very brutal. brutal and then he ends up dropping the inhaler he, they they have to dump, dump his body in the ocean and trish takes his bug out bag which has an assault rifle and his inhaler in it and she eventually i think at the end of this episode like right at the end she starts using the inhaler and the yeah. inhaler is like steroids on steroids <laughs> yeah. and make her super strong super alert just everything. Yeah, so and they actually take it. I actually found it pretty cool when they kind of, you know, took it into that perspective point of view, because it was like all slow mo and you know it was like super like it, everything was very distinguishable and slow mo. It was very yeah. Cool. Well, at one point, so every time she takes it, they show her eyes like focus. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't think it's this episode. One of the episodes she takes it, and you get like a point of view shot. And it's dark. She's in a building and it's dark, but as soon as she hits it, everything lights up for her. It's a really yeah. interesting way of showing just how it heightens all of her senses. Yeah. I think that's pretty much everything interesting that happens in that episode. So Episode, episode three, three yep. would be AKA Soul Survivor. As her visions intensify, Jessica visits an abandoned clinic where she stumbles on a new lead. Jerry faces an ultimate or ultimatum after her secret gets out. So, yes, uh, Jessica finds the IGH facility. Mm-hmm. It's disguised as international <clears throat> garment handlers. Yeah, and it's like some kind of hosiery Because warehouse. she's been having nightmares about her time spent there, which yeah. we find out was about 20 days. And we also find out later that when she was released, they didn't know she had any powers. Right. And so she goes there, investigates. She has a few more flashbacks. And Jerry got the news that she has ALS. ALS. Yep, so she's dying. And her, this is where Jerry's story really starts to get intertwined with everything. And her partners at the firm want to give her the buyout clause they have if one of them is compromised. So that kind of starts that subplot, which is really a big subplot. It goes through the entire, I don't think it's wrapped up until the very last episode. Yeah. It's constantly going. 
But it was pretty intense, yeah, too. Yeah, Hogarth pulls some shit. Yeah. What else? Read the description again for me. As her visions intensify, Jessica visits an abandoned clinic where she stumbles on a new lead. Jerry faces an ultimatum after her secret gets out. I think that's pretty much it. I, that's pretty much it, yeah. There wasn't much else in that one, so we'll move on to four. A.K.A. God Help the Hobo. Between anger management classes and tabloid scandals... Jessica and Trish track down a third patient linked to IGH. Oscar intends, or extends an olive branch. Okay, so I guess what did happen in the third one, because it leads into this fourth one, Jessica goes, Jessica loses a client to the mm-hmm. Chinese guy. She goes into his office, she steals one of his clients, they get into an altercation, and she beats the hell out of him. Yeah, and then he ends up trying to like push legal action and all and of that. And she does get arrested, but released on... Probation, but she has to go to anger management. Yes. That only came up this one episode. That was just once she was in anger management. Yeah. So they find out. They find out. I forget what they forget. They figure out somebody is after Trish specifically. I think. Yeah. And they or Jessica ends up blowing up Trisha's spot to make it look like her and her man are going through a She didn't want up. Trish to go with her. Yeah. Because Trish was getting, you know, really... Hopped up. Yeah. On the inhaler and all the steroids on steroids, but... Um, yeah, and she ends up basically creating, like, this tabloid media frenzy scandal around her so that way she can't go anywhere without being seen, right? What was the third patient that she ended up tracking down? I forget. <laughs> It wasn't Speedster Dude. No, I don't think it was a... Th- I, I don't remember. They don't find... Hang on, I'm going to look. I'm going to pull up the episode links, too, because just i got to look at them. I can't just listen to you say it and remember everything. Oh, so this is where they uh, find out about Inez, the nurse. Oh. So, yep, and, they, and Hogarth is the one that finds out later that there was another... Another patient. Okay. So that was probably towards that was towards the end of the yeah, episode. So Inez is a nurse that worked at IGH, and mm-hmm. she got badly injured. They, no, that is the third patient. They find out there was a third patient, which we learn about her later. She did show up in this episode because she shows up as one of the doctors that is actually dead. Yeah. To talk to Trish. Yeah. But Jessica goes and said, Trish, that's why... That's why Jessica did the tabloid thing. She right. let Trish go because she thought Trish was going to get murdered. Okay. It's all coming back to me now. So, yeah, they find this nurse, Inez. She's homeless, living in, like, a church or something. And they take her in and they put her into, Jer- into Hogarth's protection mm-hmm. to keep her from being murdered. Because everybody that worked for IGH is slowly being killed off. Right, as they would being from a shady underground, you know, Yeah, so go ahead and the next one. A.K.A. The Octopus. Backed into a corner, Jessica is forced to share her intel on the killer. A groggy Trish tries to pull herself together before an important meeting. So, this is the one where they find out that there was another nurse working Mm -hmm. at IGH that was killed by the third person, and it was blamed on a guard there. Yeah. Or a janitor, I can't remember. I think it was a janitor. Yeah, so she she goes in and imitating... the Latino, I guess we skipped over this, but she makes up with the Latino. She helps him out, and he starts That was him extending an olive branch, okay. which, yeah, he did. No, remember, she he turns her down. She tries to fuck him, and he turns her down oh, on this yeah. one. Yeah. And um, so he can make fake IDs, though. That, yeah, he's and, like a forger. forger. Yeah, really damn good one. Yeah. And he makes her a medical ID to get into the mental hospital because they're holding this dude in a psych ward because he has the mind of like a 12 year old or something yeah something like that and while there she finds out that before the murder before he he committed the murder quote mm-hmm. unquote, he was meeting with some doctor Carl Malice and they would go to the aquarium and look at octopuses hmm. so she stakes out the aquarium for a couple days and finally sees him and that's when the third powered person shows up an older right. woman and the end of the episode is them Power Woman sees Jessica, punches the glass so the aquarium shatters, and then leaves. Yeah. So that's how that episode goes. Go ahead. Episode 6, a.k.a. FaceTime. Jessica gatecrashes an exclusive country club on the hunt for the killer. 
and Trish's new addiction begins to spiral out of control. Yes. So what she does is... So Trish is addicted to this stuff. Yeah, that inhaler, the... We'll call it steroid squared. Yeah. So, so Jessica finds... Looks up... Somehow she looks up Carl and finds out that all of his expenses are being paid by this dude who is at this country club. So mm-hmm. she crashes the country club. The guy won't help her, so she, like, holds the guy's son hostage, basically. Yeah. So the guy gives her the address for Carl. Because Carl healed his son. Remember, his son was going yeah. to die as an infant. IGH healed his son through experiments and shit like that. Yeah. And this is also the episode where Inez finds out about Jerry having ALS and tells her that there was a fourth Mm -hmm. that could heal. So she gets interested in that and she goes to talk to this guy, but the guy doesn't want to help her. He's in jail. He's been arrested for assault. Right. And she's basically offering her services as the best lawyer in New York for free if he'll heal her. And at first he turns her down in this episode. Hmm. Then the the country club guy gives Jessica the address where Carl lives. She goes to the home. There's nobody there. She investigates. She goes into the basement where the power woman's been staying. Right. And the power woman and Carl come in behind her. And we have, this is the moment on episode six where things start to really pick up because we have the big reveal, which is the power woman. Oh, it's her mother. It's her mother. Yeah. She survived the crash. So that leads us directly into the next episode, which was, I think, one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, this next one was? Yes. Uh, episode 7, a.k.a. I Want Your Cray Cray. Flashbacks shed new light on the aftermath of the family's car accident and reveal a painful turning point in Jessica's adult life. So ba- this whole episode is basically a, flash- flash- a flashback. flashback. A flashback. A flashback. And it kind of shows the pads that were happening simultaneously. So Jessica's mother was burned to hell. She was a grotesque thing. Yeah. And they put her in a coma for five years, and we find out that what they did to her and Jessica was gene reprogramming. And yeah. I think it's insinuated they use they use the octopuses to do this. That's why he's obsessed with the octopuses. They yeah, never say it outright, but I'm pretty sure... They use their DNA So it makes to... me wonder if maybe he might have been part of Hydra. Hmm. I thought that, but I don't think they would connect those that... They time. might. They might. Uh... Why not? So this whole flashback shows, like, Jessica gets a boyfriend, Trish is in the middle of her drug binge, Yeah. Jessica starts dating this guy, and her mother escapes IGH to find Jessica, because she knows Jessica's out there, she wants to see her, and when she finds her, she ends up overhearing her boyfriend talking to these thugs about using Jessica to rob banks or something like that. Yeah, because basically her boyfriend was going to sell her out as muscle to these dudes. Yeah, and so yeah, she, she kills the boyfriend gruesomely just bashing his head against the fucking concrete. So Jessica finds that that boyfriend, the mom decides she's too dangerous to be around Jessica and by the end of the flashback Jessica and Trish decide they both need to get help and stick together. So that's when Trish kind of comes out of her drug binge. Yeah. Trish was a pop star. Basically you said she was basically Oh, uh, she was basically like Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, back, or yeah, Britney Spears, yeah, or the, whatever. The music video was yeah. Britney Spears. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, because that one's, yeah. 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 yeah, so, and then the episode ends with Jessica, I don't know how to word this, she, it comes back to the flashback, back to present day, and they, and she doesn't accept it, she goes a little ballistic, and Carl has this serum that will knock out the power people, Mm -hmm. and he knocks her out and chains her to her mother's bed. Right. So, episode eight, a.k.a. Ain't We Got Fun? While Jessica debates her next move, Malcolm confronts Trish about her erratic behavior, and Jerry makes contact with a healer. Okay, so Jessica wakes up, Carl tries to talk her into helping... He, she, she agrees. He lets her out. She calls the cops. They show up. Carl runs away. And then while they're waiting for the cops, her mother, like, connect over yeah. some bullshit childhood story. And she ends up helping her mom escape. Terrible idea. <laughs> and then the other thing was that we kind of skipped over was at some point during this series, the boyfriend of Trish poses mm-hmm. and she turns him down for whatever fucking reason some bullshit contrived reason yeah so now she ends up sleeping with malcolm of course she does and malcolm finds out she's hopped up on this fucking drug 
The steroid squared. The steroid squared. And let's see, what else? Uh, he go. He helps get some dirt on Hogarth's uh, associates to try and get them to not buy, force her into a buyout. Right. That happens. We find out one of them is going to gain nightclubs. Mm-hmm. And he's married, and he kind of spills some of the dirt on the other one who has offshore drug bank accounts. <sighs> Because who doesn't in this universe? Yeah, if you're then, a big corporate person, you're going to be dirty. And then Hogarth goes to... This is where Hogarth goes to see the healer, and mm-hmm. he kind of turns her down. And by the end of it, she takes her mother back to her apartment, and they are shot at. By you, don't see, you don't see who shoots at him. Jessica gets hit, and her mother goes after the shooter, and that leads us right into the next episode. Episode 9, a.k.a. Shark in the Bathtub. The shooting forces Jessica to rethink her plans. Meanwhile, Asgard asks for help with a family crisis, and Trish frustrations finally boil over. So yeah, they find out that it's the other PI, the Chinese guy, trying to kill... Jessica. Wasn't trying to kill Jessica, was trying to kill her mother. Right. And they incapacitate him, throw him in the bathtub. They use the (laughs) serum that knocks out power people to knock him out. Yeah, he was out. 24 hours. Yeah. And... Oscar, so, man, we're, we skip over a lot of little details, but they don't become important until later. Oscar has a son. He's in a custody battle with his ex-wife. She tries to abduct him. Mm-hmm. Jessica and her mother track her down. They literally stop a bus with their bare hands. Yeah. And he gets his son back. And that's kind of when Jessica, like, has this, oh, I want I want a family, you know. I want to be with yeah, my mother because... to not, not go away. Yeah. Hogarth gets the guy released from prison. The healer. And he heals her. Or says he heals her. And she introduces him to Jessica. And Jessica doesn't believe that he was there. She doesn't remember him. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, she didn't remember the fast guy either. Right. She's not the most reliable witness. And then, at the very end, she tries to kill... Jessica's mom tries to kill the other PI. Right. And Jessica's forced to call the cops and her mother is arrested. Right. And that kind of goes right into the next episode. Episode 10, a.k.a. Porkchop. Jerry f- Jerry finagles a deal for her new client in exchange for Carl's location. Trish forges ahead with her own investigation. A prison guard crosses a line. So she's in prison now, and it's pretty much assumed she's going to go to the raft, which was... That was, the other, that was another tie-in to the larger MC yeah, was the raft. The raft. And so Hogarth comes up with a plea deal. She's basically doing this pro bono to help out because Jessica's helped her so much. Yeah. And the plea deal is that if she gives up Carl and admits to the murder, she'll be put in a maximum security prison on land for the rest of her life, but still get to see Jessica. Right. But she won't betray Carl because they have like a romance or something. I think they were they tried to actually marry or something. They like are that. married. They but are married. with her being le- legally dead, she yeah, can't. But they're, yeah. They're married. They're married. Oh, the prison guard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that guy was a douche. Um, Basically, he was a prison guard for a long time, but he's been killing people, and I forget how it says that he kills them, but I remember... He makes them look like suicides. Yeah, he makes them look like suicides, and he basically takes all of the badge numbers, like the ID numbers of each prisoner, and puts them... Holds them. Trophies. And, yeah, holds them as trophies, actually, literally on... His wall because they're it's, behind a head. Um, yeah, they're behind like a prosthetic head or something like that of something that he hunted. But yeah, she ends up killing him. Yeah. So she well, she doesn't go to kill him. She's trying to get dirt on him to get him because she finds out he's been abusing her mother in prison. Right. And he attacks her in his home. Yeah. She he sprays she, her with like pepper, pepper spray. spray and then starts beating on her and she defends herself and kills him because she's super powered. Yeah. And then she makes it look like a suicide, which leads us into the next one, which was the best episode for one specific reason. Episode 11, a.k.a. Three Lives and, I'm going to assume this company. Counting. Oh, Three Lives and Counting. That's it. Shocked by her own actions and haunted by visions of Kilgrave, Jessica worries she's turning into a monster. Trisha's plans for Carl become clear. So, I guess I did skip over. She finds Carl... And she makes a deal with her mom. Basically, her mom will give up Carl, mm-hmm. but not until Jessica has to get him a fake passport so he can skip town at the same time they're trying to arrest him. Right. 
but the deal will still go through because she gave up Carl's location. So Trish finds out where Carl is because she's running out of the spray. Mm -hmm. So she needs Carl to make more of it because it's a derivative of his formula. But the best part of this episode is that basically it's one of the Arkham... Which Arkham game was it? Arkham City. Okay. Kilgrave's in her head the entire episode. Yeah, it's which great. is very cool. You see him, and she's talking to him, and it's really good. It's, it's but it's even better, too, because obviously he's in her head, so nobody else can see him. And she's literally talking to him out loud in front of everybody. Yeah, and everybody's like, who the fuck are you talking to? Yep. Are you talking to me? I didn't say that. Yeah, but Kilgrave obviously kills it. Trish takes Ka- uh, Callus, or is that what his name? Malice, Malice, Malice. Malice. And instead of getting the formula, which is what we're led to believe, she wants him to redo the procedure that made Jessica. She wants to be powered. And Jessica comes in right in the middle of it. It's killing Trish. Yeah. She stops him. She almost kills him. But he decides to do the noble thing and destroy the facility with himself in it. Yeah. So by the end of it, Trish is in the hospital. Jessica, this is the best part. I love this part. It wasn't any action, but Jessica's sitting in the hospital in the waiting room. Kilgrave is sitting next to her mm-hmm. talking to her and she says something like I know I'm not you because like I'm afraid to do it or I, I regret killing people or something like that yeah. and, and Tennant is just looking at her and he goes well I'll be here when you need me and I <laughs> loved it yes yeah. Quiet, and it's just like, yep, I'm always going to be here whenever you need me. <laughs> exactly, because that in itself sets him up to come back, obviously, yeah. which is fucking great. Yeah, I'm on I wish board. they hadn't killed him off in the first season. Yeah. He's so good. Maybe Thanos would revive him. I doubt it, because he's such a minor villain. But and plus, too, you know, he's Netflix cinematic universe, so. Oh, he's so good. It's I know. So, so that, anyways. That, that one's pretty easy to sum up. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Episode 12, a.k.a. Pray for My Patsy. As Jessica and Dorothy wait anxiously for updates on Trish, a call from from Costa brings alarming news. Jerry hatches a plan to get her revenge. Okay. So we find out... We find out that there was no fourth-powered person. They stole all of Jerry's shit. Yeah, because him, him and the chick that was a nurse are supposedly together, and they're both con men. Yep, so con, con people. Jerry. So Jerry spends the entire episode. She buy, she gets all of her shit back. She buys an unmarked gun from uh, what's what's the black uh, dude's name? It's in all of these because he makes his his obligatory cameo. Yeah, well. I forget his name. Oh, man. So, um. <clears throat> And she gives it to the woman because the woman is the fourth powered person's lover. Yeah. And makes up this story that he was sending letters to other women and getting money from them and blah, blah, blah. So she goes in and kills him, Jerry. Yeah. And then Jerry calls the cops to report a shooting. So it's an unmarked gun. And she gets away with basically putting them both away, killing one and getting the other put away as revenge. And so Jessica's mom is looking for Trish because she finds out Carl's dead. She breaks out of prison and she blames Trish for killing so the whole episode's her trying to get to trish she finally does jessica stops her jessica wants to kill her she tries to kill her but can't and jessica's mom knocks her out and basically kidnaps her she steals up up uh, rv yeah and starts to try and run towards the canadian border so that, that's pretty much the entire episode which leads into the finale yeah, uh, episode 13, a.k.a. Playland. Waking up in unfamiliar surroundings, Jessica once again finds herself torn between two worlds and facing an impossible choice. So the whole episode is them kind of traveling in the RV. Mm-hmm. And Jessica jumps back and forth between should I turn her in, should I not? And then at some point, again, she decides to help... Oh, Turk! It's Turk. right here on the Wikipedia page. Rob uh, Morgan is Turk. That's his name, Turk. Dang it. So... And they're trying to run away, and for whatever, they help this family who was in a car accident, and they're talking about becoming heroes, and then, for whatever reason, her mother decides that she needs to, she can't do this anymore, she's putting Jessica in danger, mm-hmm. and she needs to be arrested or killed or whatever. So, they go to this theme park that was like a big part of Jessica's childhood. Playland. Yep. And they get on the Ferris wheel like going around and around. Well, at the same time, Trish gets out of the hospital. She basically just leaves. Yeah. To find, because she knows where they went. Yeah. And she goes to find them. And they're sitting in the Ferris wheel talking, and all of a sudden, from off screen, her gunshot, and Jessica's mom's brains blow out. Yeah. Trish. Epic. Shot her. Yeah. It was, it was, 
Because I'm sitting there going, I know there's only about 10 minutes left in this. How are they going to wrap this up? And then... And oh, just, shit! It shocks you, you know? Yeah. It's out of nowhere. So she's dead. The police... Jessica goes after Trish. Doesn't hurt her, but takes the gun. Gets back in the seat with her mom. The police show up. They think that Jessica killed her, so they mm-hmm. kind of let Jessica off the hook. Because yeah. they were gonna, they were shooting to kill, because her mom killed the cops. Right. And then uh, it kind of shows that Jessica has nothing to do with Trish anymore. Yeah, because oh. she was happy that she did it, just didn't have to be her. Yeah. Hogarth uses the dirt. She gets out of her firm. She gets the buyout with several more zeros ended to it. Oh, yeah. And all of her clients, which is 62% Percent. of all of their clients, there's three of them, and Hogarth is taking up is taking up 62%. I mean, that's two-thirds that, almost. Yeah, two-thirds out of three partners. That's yeah. insane. And she they always named out the she has Rand. I have Rand. I mm-hmm. have Rand. She's like, shut up, Buck. Dang. Yeah, nobody cares about fucking guess, ramen noodle head. I guess if, if that's all he gets the rest of the Netflix run is just some name drops, I'm fine with that. Uh, I know, he's probably not, but... If they, you know what? They need to make him just a side character in Luke Cage. Yeah, make, I'd be okay with yeah. that. Have it be like a buddy, you know, buddy series and or something. so Malcolm goes to work for the Chinese guy as a PI, yep. and they're on retainer for Hogarth. Hogarth. And at the end, Jessica... At the, I was kind of happy because a lot of these don't end happily. This yeah. one actually did because at the end, she goes to the Latino guy who was her boyfriend at this point. They did bang at one point. We yeah. We skipped over that. A couple of times. And she sits down and eats dinner with him and his son. And it, it kind of... She ends up happy at the end of it. I mean, her yeah, mom just died. God. And none of these Netflix series have ended with happiness. No. None of them. So but you know it's Jessica Jones. She's not going to oh, stay happy. Oh, I know she's happy. not going to stay happy. It was kind of nice that we leave off with her being and a good happy. Note. Yeah, yeah, for a little bit at least. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I know that was quick summaries of all of them and pretty poorly done by me because I'm doing it all off the top of my head. But Yeah, we both are. I didn't really participate much besides reading the fucking <laughs> summary. So yeah, sorry. whatever. That's what you get for shotgunning in a, a series like this. Oh. Yeah, I mean, preferably we would go back and rewatch it again, but it's just 13 hours. Yeah. And the first half was very slow, so it'd be hard to go through. The second, the last second half is very, very fun. Yeah. The first half is not, not bad, but it's slow. It's yeah. a slow burn. So, all in all... I enjoyed it. enjoyed it, yeah. I really liked it. Any I, criticisms of it? Basically, we've said it already. The first half was slow. I mean, there could have been a little more action, but I really like the fact that they went more psychological. It was very psychological. Even even going above and beyond Kilgrave being in her head, it was yeah. all a lot of psychological It was stuff. very dark and, yeah. like, oh, yeah, it was awesome. Loved it. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I think it's a return to form because, I mean, the defenders... It kind of washes out the taste in your mouth from... Defenders and Iron Fist were not very good. Yeah. I'm glad they picked back up with Jessica Jones. I know that I don't have release dates, but about the same time this came out, they started hitting us. I mean, the Luke Cage poster, yep. Daredevil Season 3. The Netflix is trying to get this shit out as quick as they can because they're about to lose all this when Disney next year starts mm-hmm. up there. So we're... I'm pretty sure this summer is going to be pretty packed. Oh, yeah. For stuff. And... We are, too, as the Microphone Joes, because the next couple months are the big months for us in terms of movies and things like that. So. Yep, Infinity War and Daredevil, or not Solo, Daredevil, Deadpool 2. Solo, and, uh, Ant-Man 2, yep. we got a lot of stuff coming up. So next week, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Yeah. Do you have anything else, any parting words for the season before we end it? Watch it. I watch it, definitely. It's worth your time. Uh, probably don't shotgun it like we did. Yeah. At least not the first half. Yeah. Because I think that was why it was so hard for me to remember a lot of it because it just was so slow and we were trying to get through it. But the second half, you can it, it run. It flies. It yeah. Flies. You get lost in it. Yeah. So next week, we're going to do Kaiju, right? Kaiju. Pacific Rim 2 comes out. So yep. we're going to do that. Have you watched the first Pacific Rim? I have not, yeah. but I, I can shotgun that too. So, so Kaiju... We're going to be going over Pacific Rim 2, doing a little review of that, our favorite kaiju in movies. And, yeah, so kaiju's next week, uh, our next podcast, the, kind of the theme for that week. This week we have the shit show is going to be Howard the Duck. Yes. Ugh. And Love it. Yeah, so we're going to get back on track with our stuff. We will not be, hopefully, missing any more time like we just did. Yeah. So, yeah. Our, our schedules should pretty much align from here yeah, on out. Yeah, so. be good, so... Probably going to have a lot of free time in the future. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of more time to invest into this. So, 
Uh, as always, please, if you enjoyed this, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, tell us how badly we did. And yeah, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, obviously. Pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. Anything that's called a social media? Yeah. You probably have one of those. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm C- we're Mike from Joe's, and I'm CJC. And I'm Norev. And we will see you next time. Stay average, folks.